Hello students, how are you? How are you doing? How your vacations were? Actually, if I would be in the class, you would have given me the answers of all my questions. But now it is not possible. But I hope you are well and you are doing also well. And, how, and I also hope that in future also you will do the well. Okay. So students, you were in the lower grades. There was a less study. But as you are into the higher grade in your class 8, you have to study more. Okay. Uh, because the studies have increased a lot for every subject. Not only for the science and not only for the maths. But all subjects are equally important like this subjects. So you will have to give justice for every, sub, uh, every subject in detail. And for that sake, what you have to be? You have to be very much regular, punctual and sincere in your studies. Okay. So I myself, Meera Madam, uh, Meera Pawar, and since last uh, uh, 13 to uh, 14 years, I am teaching in Rotary English Medium School. Uh, and I am going to deal with you this year for subject uh, chemistry. So I hope you will support me, you will cooperate me. Uh, if you, we all would be in the class, we have introduced with each other. But your introduction is not possible. Uh, only through um, online session, I will get to know, get, get to know your names and all. So with, the, with this great thing, Without wasting much time, let us start our today's session. Today's session would be introductory students. I am not going to page anything into the today's session. In today's class, in today's session, I am going to introduce you about the important lesson of the chemistry which you are going to learn everything in detail and without getting bored. This is my word to you all but but the thing is that you must be regular, punctual and sincere in your studies. So let's start our lesson. So what is our lesson? Materials, metals and non-metals. See so, students, in your lower grades, in your 6th and 7th class, you have learned about physical change and the chemical change. Okay, but now physical change and chemical change that you have learned and I think you have recited also. But here, recta mar policy will not be there. Okay, everything, every concept you must learn in detail and you should know in detail. I will have focus more on the concept. I will never ask you to uh, recite these things. Okay, so first of all, it's very clear to you that you must understand every concept. Red and right policy is not in my dictionary. Understood? So that um, I hope you will support me. Okay. So this is the lesson materials and the non-metals. Students, what do you mean by metals? What you are knowing about the metals and non-metals? So this is just a bifurcation of the elements. Okay. Till date. Till date we have 118 elements. Actually, in our 10th class syllabus, in our lesson, it is given that we have till date 118 elements. Okay. Out of that, 92 elements are found into the nature. Means, those are natural elements. While other elements are man-made or these are artificial elements. These are discovered by, these are not discovered by the man. These are made by the man. Okay. And these elements are arranged orderly in our modern periodic table. Okay. Modern periodic table which is based on what? Increasing atomic mass number. I know it's going to be very uh, difficult for you madam what you are talking increasing atomic mass number, uh, the atomic number. So don't worry everything we will learn in detail but just i want to tell you in introductory lesson that metals and non-metals are actually elements okay and these elements are arranged in our modern periodic table basis on increasing atomic number okay so most of the metals are present non-metals are less into the 
atmosphere or into the into this area everywhere environment uh, less non metals are present but metal number is more okay so if you will talk about the modern periodic table these how these uh, metals are bifurcated how non metals are bifurcated and how they are differentiated based on the metals and non metals that also we will learn actually um, matter you are knowing students uh, i think in your uh, class 6 you have learned you had listen matter means what anything which occupies some space and has mass okay so there is a, a bifurcation right there is a bifurcation sorting of all elements basis of all elements of the matter basis on its physical property as well as on its chemical property if i would talk about the matter then you can see me the matter which is anything which occupies some space and has mass is called as what matter okay so everything beside us is said to be matter am i right students myself matter this board matter this chalk is matter wherever wherever i am recording your lecture now that is also matter you are sitting somewhere that is also matter you are watching in the laptop or on the mobile that is also matter so everything is the matter because it is occupying some space and it has mass so this will be considered as a matter okay but this matter is made up of what small particles students this matter is made up of what small particles and this particles will have a specific characteristics okay that we will learn in a higher class but still i shall i wanted to let you know some details about the lesson before moving ahead so this matter is made up of what some particles and those particles also will have specific properties but but if we talk about the matter then matter is made up of three states actually matter is exist into five states five states but last two states are discovered by the man or this is the discovery of the man so those two uh, states of the matter you will learn in your class 9 i will just tell the name of them but you are not going to we are not going to see them in the detail so as you are knowing since many years since many grades you are learning that matter is exist into the three states that is solid liquid and the gases and this matter solid liquid and gas will also have specific characteristics specific Uh, properties and th then so that only we can easily say that this matter is exist into the solid state this matter is exist into the liquid state and this matter is exist into the gaseous state because we are knowing the properties but what are the properties in detail we will learn in a higher grades okay so this is the physical uh, we can say the by the appearance physical means what see students means mostly we use the word physical physical means what the external the outer appearance so these are all what the physical uh, properties of the matter or matter exist into the three state physically okay if we will talk the chemical bifurcation of the matter the matter is divided into elements okay matter is said to be present into the form of the elements everywhere okay and these elements these elements are divided or are bifurcated into what three forms what are those metals non metals and metalloids and this is our topic okay now i have come to the topic this is our topic so physical contribution of the matter or physical bifurcation of the matter is what solid liquid and the gaseous state while if you will try to bifurcate the matter chemically then chemical means what chemical appearance how the particular metal how the particular element is behaving with oxygen is behaving with carbon dioxide is behaving with carbo uh, we can say acid how does a particular element is behaving with the base how the particular element is behaving with the uh, acids or with the oxides or uh, water so how the particular element is behaving with all these compounds 
those are called as its chemical properties okay and chemical properties means what chemical change you have learned last year mm -hmm. what exactly happened in that we will learn later slowly slowly i shall let you know everything in detail so no need to worry about it so <laughs> this is the chemical uh, contribution or the chemical bifurcation chemical division if you will try to do of the matter then it is divided into what elements okay and if you will try to bifurcate the elements the elements are bifurcated into three main forms what are those metals non metals and metalloids okay the metal means what the non metal means what what are metalloids so students one interesting see the thing may i tell you now you are watching my video uh, i think on a laptop or on a mobile right or on your pc so your pc and your uh, pc will have a motherboard right your uh, laptop will also have a chip your mobile will also have a chip in that chip whatever the thing is there that is called as a metalloid metalloid are the substances which possesses the properties of both metal and non metal those are called as what metalloids understood those are called as what metalloids which are possesses the properties of metals also and means which behaves like a metal also and like a non metal also such elements are called as what metalloids okay so i think it's clear for you about the metalloids uh, so metal is what metals means electron donor they are always donating electron okay they are always donating electron while what about electron acceptor called electron acceptor are said to be non metal okay so how i am going to deal with this lesson that i shall let you know what is first the first is what understanding metal and non metal okay understanding metal and non metal okay then we will talk about some physical properties physical properties of metal and non metal along with its exceptional cases now you may ask me what is mean by exceptional cases means generally we see say that metals are found into the solid state but this statement is not suitable for all the metals you know students mercury right mercury this mercury is never found into the solid state it is found into the liquid state so this is what what i said the metals are always found into the solid state but it is the exceptional case that metal is never found metal is not always found into the solid state some metals are found into what liquid state also right so this is the exceptional case so along with the exceptional case i am going to explain you about every property physical property i am talking about now again the question is means what physical property physical property means how the substance looks from outside do we say physical appearance okay physical appearance how the particular person is looking from outside right that is called as a physical appearance so here also how does the metal is from outside that is called as physical property so we are going to learn in detail about every physical property of the metal and non metal along with its uh, exceptional cases so this is third now what is meant by third point third point will be chemical properties of metals and chemical properties of metals and non metals means how the particular metal is behaving in oxygen how the particular metal is behaving with uh, uh, behaving with the water how the particular metal is behaving with acid with base with another metal okay or how what happens when metal reacts with all these things at the same time what happens when metal and non metal react with each other when metal and non metal reacts with each other what kind of compounds are getting formed that also we will learn okay because it is always not uh, true that metals will always react with oxygen carbon dioxide or uh, your acid and your bases okay or on with the acids it's not always true 
some metals can react with each other. Metals and non-metals also can react. And what kind of compounds are getting formed? That also we will learn into the chemical properties. Sorry, into the physical properties. Okay. The reaction of the metals and non-metals we will learn. Okay. Then chemical properties we learn. Now chemical properties also over. Now where does the metal is found? Occurrence of the metal. The fourth point is what? Occurrence of metal. What is meant by occurrence? Metal and non-metal. Occurrence of metal and non-metal. Occurrence means where exactly the particular metal is found. Occurrence of metal. Or in what form they are found. This is depend on the how reactive the metal is. Students, you know gold is the precious element for us or is the precious metal for us. So, in our day-to-day -day life, we used to wear the ornaments made up of gold because these are very less reactive. So, according to us, the gold is very precious. The gold is very good for us. But according to the chemistry, the gold is the least reactive metal. And the school students, so according to the science, according to the chemistry, the metal which is more reactive is more gold because it is going to be show its reactivity towards various things and so that we can get to see various things also. So according to the science and chemistry, the metal which is reacting or the metal which is very reactive is the good metal, is the precious metal. But for us, gold is a metal. So gold you are knowing which we use. This is used into the jewellery, right? Everywhere gold is used. So that gold is pressure for, precious for, for us. But for the chemistry, the precious metal might be sodium and potassium which is very reactive, cesium even. So we will learn that. So where does it found? This is found into the earth crust. In which area of the earth crust is found? Understood? In which area of the earth crust is found? Whether it is found into the combined state or into the free state. See students, those metals who are very much reactive, they were never be living alone. They are always be, be with the, some other elements or with the other metals or with the oxygen, with the carbon dioxide or with the nitrites in the form of nitrates, in the form of nitrites, in the form of carbonates. So it will never be alone as it is reactive. Right? So when these are very much reactive, they will form a bond with the other element and will always form into the combined state. While the elements who are very very less reactive, they will most probably found into the free state of the metal. Okay? Or the free state into the form. So if the substance is found into the free state, it is easier to, it is very easier to separate it, right? Or if the substance is found into the combined state, then it is difficult to separate or to get pure, right? This is called as what? Purification of the metal, okay? Means getting the pure substance from its impurities as well as from its ore. That is called as what? The purification of metal. And for that sake, there is a specific term. What's that term is? Metallurgy. That term is what? Metallurgy. That term is what? Metallurgy. Metallurgy. Sorry, my students. Metallurgy. Means obtaining a pure metal from its impurities and the ore. Okay, that also we will learn. Which is also going to be quite interesting. And according to the point of class 10, it's very, it's going to be very important so that I am saying frequently, please pay attention towards my lecture. I know some children will be saying, what is this? It's too difficult, but it's not difficult. Okay, it's, it is going to be very easy. I am going to explain you one one point, but what I am exactly going to take in this lesson, that I am going to talk. Okay, then later on what? Alloys. What is meant by alloys? See, when metal is reacting with other metal, Reacting with means uh, when this mixture is found, alloys are actually mixtures. It's not a chemical substance or it's not a compound. Alloy is actually mixture that we will learn everything in detail. Alloys means the mixture of either two metals or of either two non-metals or maybe metals and the non-metals. 
that is called as what alloys and why alloys are important that also we will learn in detail then next seven corrosion corrosion of metal corrosion of metal corrosion means what students whenever any metal comes in contact with the atmosphere this metal is reacting with oxygen with water or with some other acids and the corrosion is actually destructive process because students various things various things are made up of the metal especially if i will talk about the iron then when iron is getting oxidized oxidized means with what when the iron is coming in contact with oxygen that is called the as what oxidation of iron which is not a good process students see students you have seen various things beside us during rainy season are rusted rust means what a uh, brown flaky layer is found on it and that brown flaky layer if you will try to touch it it will turn into the turn out into the powder and that powder is called as what rust so here degradation of metal has taken place so this is the process is very very destructive see students the car bodies the bridges the wherever in the tall buildings the metals are used so every year this destruction is taking place and because of uh, that some actions are also taken against it that is called as a prevention of corrosion that also we will learn so this is all about corrosion okay then last point is the uses of metal and non metal uses of metal and non metal and non metal so i said you ki this will be the introductory lesson i have not taught you anything i have just let you know the idea of the lesson through which i am going in further my sessions so i hope you understand all these things in detail and in tomorrow's lecture we will start with a great energy our first topic that is what materials metal and non metal students if you are happy with my this session you will immediately reply me thank you so much